I'm going to have to say this is my favorite way of gardening. I'm gardening in totes that can get as little as, well, $2 if you go to a thrift store. Sometimes you find them on top of a trash can. People throw them away because they don't have a lid. How funny. Or you can go to the store. Walmart sells them for $7 a piece. These are now over three years old and going strong. Look at this. An entire garden to grow whatever I want in totes. Storage containers. They're the number five, which is a food grade plastic. Same thing you get your coffee in at the store, cottage cheese, sour cream, yogurt, kids food, everything comes in five. Sometimes you find two. Anything with a one, a two, a four and a five is perfectly safe. Now one is generally clear bottles, like drinking bottles that you get. Those are one and they don't last that long, though you can grow in them. I've done it. So anything with a one you can grow in, it is food safe. But for totes and containers to grow in, I have found two and five perfect. And it just so happens these are number five, which is food grade. This is an excellent way to garden. If you don't want to get a large raised bed, which I do not, this gives you miniature beds. They're not even miniature, they're just small. And you can plant at your pace, one tote at a time. You can collect leaves and different things from the garden. And then as you fill one at a time, you plant. You don't have to fill the whole thing at one time because you're only gonna do one tote at a time. And food, food production in here is unbelievable. This particular horseshoe shaped garden is a godsend. I'm telling you, nature's miracle. This has been wonderful. The amount of soil, store-bought soil in here is probably less than $10 because most of them were put together using soil from the ground, leaves from around the garden, or leaves from trees, any place I could find leaves, and then kitchen scraps, and then maybe topped with oh, an inch or two of potting soil. You don't have to. Gary never puts potting soil in his. But with this, you can plant what you want. Don't plant just the plant. Think about it. What do you like? Do you like zucchini? Do you like yellow squash? Do you like tomatoes? Do you like watermelon? Do you like radishes, carrots, cucumbers? Well, this garden is growing exactly what I like and what I want to harvest. This is one day's harvest, though I will admit it may last me two days. Now, why would you say two days? There's so much there because I might pickle some. And when I pickle them, I can eat a jar of pickled zucchini in one day. It is so good. The hardest part of pickling a zucchini, and yes, those are cucumbers too, is the waiting. I have to wait at least three days. And that's the hardest part. And why I will have to admit, sometimes I start to grab something at the second day, but boy, is it good. In here, I've shown you over and over, I have gone mainly with different types of squash. I've got three types, which you can see here. I've got the Black Beauty Zucchini. I've got the yellow, sometimes called Golden Zucchini. Coco Zell, which has got the stripes. And then these are some cucumbers coming off of one vine I planted in here. This is my favorite because there's actually, as it stands right now, no flavor. And you would say, what? No flavor? I mix that with anything I want to mix it with. You want to use it in a soup to make it creamy. You can blend that up and put it in a soup. You won't even know it's there. You want to add this to ground beef or ground chicken or turkey. You could either chop it up in a chopper. You can hand grate it. Either way will work and cook it in with your food, your meat, and you will never know it's there. You want to go vegetarian, fry it up, add in your seasoning and use it for whatever tacos or whatever you're going to make and you will think it's meat. It's wonderful. This has a little bit of a flavor, kind of a sweetness, but it still works. And I have used this and the same thing with Coco Zell. Sometimes tastes a little nutty, but otherwise it's perfect. And nutty is a good thing. Cucumbers. I love growing cucumbers. So everything here will probably last me for one meal. I'll use one squash and I may pickle the rest but I love tomatoes. So in here, I have taken my time to calculate how I wanna grow this and what I wanna grow. Because if you grow a bunch of stuff you don't like, then it's kind of like, mm, and a lot of us do it. I've done it. I've grown a lot of stuff I don't like. Okay, we won't talk about the fig leaf gourd that's over there. I don't know what I'm gonna do with it. It's a type of melon, kind of gourd, squash, but I don't know what to do with it. It's kind of got a sweet melon flavor. I don't wanna add it to my meat, but it's not sweet enough 
to eat on its own. And this was Gary's thing though. He loves it. And if you take them when they're really small, you can use them like you would a zucchini by adding it into something else. But I'm gonna have to say, zucchini is my favorite. So like I said, this has got my favorite things going in here. I've got peppers in the back. I've already been harvesting peppers. Those are sweet Italian peppers. These are tomatoes. Now I've only harvested one so far, but that's okay. They're just starting to turn. And the rest in here are mainly squash. And of course, I've got the one which I just harvested is harvested from the cucumber in here. But I went with some different varieties of smaller tomatoes. I only want to do small in here because I want to be able to harvest quickly. Had I put something like a brandy wine, something large like that, or a big boy, again, I would have had to wait. Those can take sometimes three months to grow. These things, they're going to grow in a matter of weeks. So I'm putting in here what I use, garlic chives. We use the garlic chives all the time. It's growing on the bottom. So the water coming out of the totes are watering my plants on the bottom, which is wonderful. And then I've also got walking onions, which you use like green bunching onions. I love these, so I'm growing that. So everything in here is exactly what I am going to eat. There's been a couple volunteers that showed up that I really didn't want, like red vein sorrel, but it's not in the way, so I'm gonna leave it. The other thing is I propagate in here. So right now I'm propagating this beautiful geranium. I just leave it be. It gets nutrients back and forth as critters, you know, your earthworms, your microbes travel back and forth and it makes the cuttings just grow so quickly. I get so many roots from that so fast. So I do propagating as well. And that is a really good thing. So think about that. You want to propagate some fig trees. You want to propagate tomatoes because you can take the trimmings. You can do that too. I'll walk around the backside so you can see it. Now this is being covered because we still have cool nights and it, this way it doesn't catch a draft. It was mainly for the cucumber because cucumbers really like it warm. But here I want to emphasize, you can start a garden so cheap. Think about that, $7 each. These chairs were thrown out. I painted them, oh my gosh. I painted some of these 20 years ago and they're holding the paint. They've only been painted once. They started to get, you know, like white on your hands. So people threw them out. And when you paint them, I'm telling you at that stage, it's the perfect time to paint them and they hold it. I've got, this is the red vein sorrel. Like I said, it came up on its own, but it's okay. You can add it into salad. And then here I had a milk carton, covered it in the fabric like I do. And I went ahead and stuck a pea, oh, look, a red vein sorrel in there. I went ahead and stuck a little bit of um, strawberry plant in there, a runner that was coming off and it took. But look how beautiful this is. If you've got a bad back, you've got issues. Can you imagine that all you have to do is come in here and you can sit on a chair and you can weed? There's not that many weeds, but you know, you can tend to your garden, you can trim it easy, you could do whatever you want and you're not bending. And watering, I am lucky, I've got a hose here. So with a hose, I have this whole thing watered in under two minutes. Under two minutes. Oh, there's another tomato that will be ready at any time easiest thing to tend to, cheapest garden you're ever going to do. And then I use my irrigation tubing. I use it for trellising. I use it for caging up tomatoes, as you can see over there. I made tomato cages with it. And I do use this also for shading because it creates a sun shade and you can add as many as you want. At like 10 cents a foot, you can't go wrong. And this stuff will last for years and years. And literally, you cut it with the scissors and you put this thing up in two minutes. You put it together like a puzzle. These are just stuck here. No big deal, the three of them. But look at this. You can make holes in them with a soldering iron and then you can design them any way you want. Look at the configuration you can do with that. All with irrigation tubing. Nobody, I looked, had been using this half inch irrigation tubing. You can get the rolls like 50 foot long for $10, or you can go get for $35 to $50, 500 feet. You can't go wrong. I bought 500 feet. See, here's the one with the tomatoes. Isn't that something? I want to get this one under there. I'm going to have to do that gently. And if it's too late, I can hoop on another piece. This has been the easiest garden to take care of and to put together. Do you realize if you went to buy a raised bed, one that was metal or wood, that it will cost you probably three, four times more than this costs? And if you get the totes at thrift stores for a couple bucks or find them in the trash can or and the chairs, people give these things away all the time. You could do this for free. 
literally for free. If I had large raised beds here and purchased those, I would have what, maybe, let's see, four totes is probably one large bed, maybe five. I would have two large raised beds, which is fine, but here's the thing. I have trees, so I can't have any open bottoms. I cannot have the holes on the bottom of my totes because the trees come in instantly. They don't just rob the water, they rob the nutrients and they will kill your plants. So my, to my holes for my totes have to be up. So it leaves about one inch of water on the bottom, which is absolutely wonderful for the plants. I have never had a problem with that. Now, if you don't have trees, of course you can put the holes anywhere you want, but we have trees. And then you keep out gophers, and you have full control. You want to cover it. You got something that you don't want the insects to get into. Put some irrigation tubing on, throw some tool on it, and you have no insects. You have squash bores. Do you have the squash bugs? You could build something like this, cover the whole thing in tool, and then you will have to hand pollinate your squash, but you won't have any squash bugs. I did look them up. They can't chew. So as long as they can't chew and you use soil that you know that they haven't had any eggs or any, anything in there, larva or anything in there, you will be okay. You have full control with this type of garden. Full control. You garden at your own pace. You don't have to bend over. It retains water beautifully if you're in a warm area because it's plastic and can only evaporate from the top. You know, I can go on and on and on, all the good things, but it is amazing how quickly this grew. It grows so fast. I have been doing this for years. I find it kind of funny because so many years ago I started, when I first started gardening, I put it up on YouTube and nobody wanted to look at it. It was like, oh, why do I want to put a tote on a chair? Why would I want to grow a tote? I'm going to go buy myself a $300 raised bed. I know people, friends of mine that did go and buy online these plastic raised beds. And you know what? They're not gardening anymore. They were too shallow. They were too hard to take care of. They couldn't fill them. When I asked, went to one of my friend's house, I said, why in the world are you not gardening? And they turned around and said to me, do you know how much money it costs to fill this? It wasn't even that big. It wasn't even as big as the birdies or the Virgo or any of those other ones. It wasn't even that big. But they still said it would cost them over $100 just to put the soil in. And, well, it just wasn't set up the same. So they had to do it all at one time. So if you were going to build and you were excited and anxious to build a garden, you could take one tote and start filling it. As soon as it's filled, you can put a little bit of soil in if you want, unless your soil's really good or you can rob it from another tote and you can plant in it. But if this was one raised bed, let's say this is the raised bed, you would have to fill all these. And I would not have had this all going. I mean, you could see almost as I went along here this year, how I filled them. So you're working at your own pace and you're saving tons of money because of the way you're working at your own pace. And when you're excited and things are going really good, you do more, you garden more, you do things that you like. And when it becomes a big, hard chore, that's when a lot of you pack it in and say, no, I'll go to the grocery store and buy my box food, my stuff that will last on the shelves for weeks and months. I don't know why, but it will, because you get not just bored from it, it becomes work and it's not working for you and you have to put so much money out on soil. This, uh-uh, I do one at a time. As you can probably see across over there on the wall, you can see where I've planted a zucchini. That one's got a tiny one. I'm just waiting for it, but I go for one at a time. In the meantime, I've got one down there, one there, one there, and then two others that have little zucchini. And I go at my pace. I grow at my pace. And it doesn't cost me any money. And as far as fertilizer, we do not buy fertilizer. You can. I will never tell you not to buy something. If you want to buy soil, you want to buy fertilizer, you want to buy whatever, just buy it and garden. We don't buy fertilizer. I make compost tea. Ooh, my squash is on there. I don't know if I can lift this. Oh my gosh. Heavy, heavy. Look, look. Some leaves in there. Some water. Keep it covered so no mosquitoes or anything get in there. Then take a dipper or a, or a watering can and water your plants. You've got nature's miracle in there and it costs you whatever that water costs, which is basically what? Pennies, if that. Your water, that's all you're putting in there, water and leaves. Let it sit, let it rot about three days later. And you know, if you have to use it early, don't worry about it. And if you forgot about it for a month, 
I had one out front I forgot about all year. And you know what? I just watered the plants. It doesn't matter. Nature doesn't expire. So you can use it when you want. So I just wanted to kind of come back out here, just awe at my garden, and take my food in there and go make dinner and pickle some stuff and just remind you there's so many things you can do. I compost in place, like I said. But then if you want to continue to feed your plants, go ahead and get a picture. I got a whole video on that. Actually, a couple of videos. I've got one video showing how to make it and putting it outside. I got another video going back less than two weeks later and it all broke down and I had compost already. In the meantime, that picture is full of holes. And what you'll see is the worms go in and out. You water from the top and you're feeding your plants. Absolutely amazing. So with that, I hope I've given you something to think about. Get gardening. Go to the store. Walmart sells the totes. Target sells the totes. A lot of your hardware stores sell the totes. And don't look for the expensive ones unless that's what you want. Get a cheap one. They work fantastic. But that have a wonderful day. And don't forget to eat what you grow. Bye-bye. Oh, you can always make them look pretty with flags. Just add on some clips and you can put some flags on. This is a harvest three days after the video. So there it is. I took a few small ones because they were on the bottom of the plant. This one got something nipped it. Not sure what, could be roly polies. Doesn't look like snails. I can use that for eggs in the morning. I needed a pepper for dinner. I took the other small one. If the squash is on the very bottom of the plant and it's really big, I just remove it. This one is kind of growing wonky, so I took it now, but that's not a bad harvest for one day. It's actually too much, and some of them are too big. But this is gonna be fantastic. All growing in my chair garden and lots more to come. We're not done yet. It is still growing fruit.